Hi there, welcome to Creator Toolbox, a show brought to you by the ServiceNow Developer Program, where we demo new ServiceNow features for every developer's toolbox. My name is Travis Tolson, Senior Developer Advocate at ServiceNow. We have Anthony and Jeevan joining us today to discuss developer sandboxes, a new feature in Yokohama. Before that, let's start off with some introductions. Thanks, Travis. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeevan. I'm a product manager on the App Lifecycle team, and I'm here to talk to you today about sandboxes. And hi, I'm Anthony. I'm an engineering manager here at ServiceNow, and also here to talk to you about sandboxes and the features we've developed in it. All right. Well, great to have you guys here. I am so excited for this. So let's dive in. All right. Let's begin. Um, so let's talk about dev sandboxes. In uh, today's going to be a quick session. We're going to talk about you know what developer sandboxes are, how sandboxes can help elevate the development in your organization, and I'll also share a little bit of a sneak peek about our other Procode offerings that you know work so well with the with the developer sandbox offering. Um, so before we get into it, just be mindful of any forward-looking statements we'll be making. This is a new product. We are uh, in Xanadu in Yokohama. We are still in CHTM, and we plan to be uh, GA soon. So uh, just be mindful of any uh, of those forward-looking statements we'll be making. So let's dive right into it. So um, let's talk about what uh, development on the ServiceNow platform is. So we know that the ServiceNow platform as today lacks the ability for any sort of like developer isolation on the platform. Um, so that for most teams, it means that there are uh, sometimes dozens or even hundreds of developers that are sharing and making changes in the same instance. And because of this lack of isolation, what happens is oftentimes developers end, end up modifying the same files which leads to conflicts that need a lot of coordination and testing to avoid any resulting side effects of it. Another big limitation on the platform, especially for the teams that are trying to use source control, is that the platform only allows for one connection to source control per app from the instance. So that means when you have multiple developers working on the same app or the same repository, that can this can lead to additional challenges and it requires additional workarounds uh, and processes just to mitigate around some of these platform limitations and challenges. So the new developer sandbox offering aims to address these challenges uh, by providing isolated environments within an instance that are going to enable multiple developers to work on the same instance without affecting anybody else or without being affected by anybody else working on the same instance. So with developer sandboxes, up to 30 developers can work in their own dedicated environments that's isolated from other developers in their own respected sandbox, respective sandboxes. So on top of this isolation, uh, the, the real uh, benefit of developer sandboxes, especially with using source control development, is the ability to connect to source control individually from the sandboxes. So developers now, instead of having to share branches or having to coordinate with each other before pushing any changes, now have the capacity to connect to source control with their own respective branches. And this allows you to implement true source control-based application development in your organization and further streamline development. Right, let, now let's look at developer sandboxes in action. Now I'm in my ServiceNow instance where I have enabled developer sandboxes. I'm going to go here, go to my sandbox management home screen, and I'm going to see, and I'm going to see all of the sandboxes that are currently running on my instance. So on this dashboard, you can see information like how many sandboxes are entitled for the instance, how many sandboxes are being used, and how many are still available for somebody to go and grab a new one and start working in that. Anytime you need a new sandbox, you're going to come here, um, allocate a new sandbox. Let's say there's a developer on your team who needs to work on a new story. They're coming in here, and then you know, you're going to assign, let's say David is working on a new story, and I'm going to give it um, a name to tell which particular story David is working on. Uh, it could be any name. It just has to be like eight characters and unique. And then you can hit this allocate button to create a new sandbox. So one thing you will see is the string that's going to tell you what is the URL of the resulting sandbox that's um, going to get created. So um, um, once you hit allocate, um, it's going to start creating a sandbox in the background. So depending upon how big or small your uh, uh, instance metadata footprint is, it's going to take that much amount of time to create a new sandbox. So instead of waiting, why don't we uh, use an existing sandbox and um, um, try to see how that works? So you can see these four sandboxes are currently 
running on the instance and you can see how how much disk space they're utilizing, who is the person who is using them, uh, when was it created and when was it last accessed. And you know, you can use these data points to make a decision of if something, you know, or see, something is utilizing a lot of more resources or something is uh, very old or not being used. So you can free up that resource so somebody else can use it. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna copy over the URL uh, for the sandbox. So you can just directly click uh, on this link to open the new sandbox in a new tab. So I'm going to copy the URL. So I'm going to open a new window here. I'm going to paste my URL and it's going to take me to the login screen where I can use my um, credentials from the original instance to log into this uh, developer sandbox. So here you can use your developer credentials, which are already there, uh, you know, configured on your subpar instance, or if you have SSO enabled on the instance, the same principles will apply and you can use SSO to log into a sandbox. So I'm going to hit login. And here I am going into my first sandbox. And here I am. Um, I am now logged into my uh, for sandbox and you will see that it just looks like a regular instance and that's because it is it is supposed to be like a very lightweight a replica of your underlying instance and this is isolated this is just for you you can come in here and do whatever kind of you know work that you want in this in the sandbox and it's going to be isolated from everybody else on the instance so um let's take a look let's take a look at what is the what's what's all there in the sandbox so i'm going to open my um business rules and I'm going to see that it has all of the metadata from you know the base instance from which the sandbox was created so anything you need for uh, working or for developing your apps your metadata everything is there in the sandbox and you can directly start working on it um, let's take an example of how you would do application and get based development in a sandbox so here I'm going to open studio So I'm in my sandbox and I am in studio. I'm trying to work on this uh, story that I've been assigned. So I'm going to open, I've opened the application that I need to make the changes on and I'm going to open this business rule where I have to make that change. I'm going to come here. I'm going to add whatever it is that um, is needed for the story. And I'm going to hit save. And one thing that we haven't seen so far is uh, how does the branching uh, isolation in sandboxes work? So uh, we saw that um, as soon as I uh, got into a sandbox, it was just like a regular instance for me. And I'm able to make any kind of changes that I want on the instance. So one uh, unique thing that you will notice once I look at my source control configuration is that I am in, uh, you know, I'm working on my application and I'm connected to Git using my own uh, personal feature branch as opposed to you know sharing a branch on the on the underlying instance. So here I'm going to use this branch uh, to commit over my changes to source control. So um, I made a couple of changes uh, to this app. I'm going to continue and I'm going to say these are Jeevan's changes for story one two three four five. And I'm going to commit these changes. So, so far, I'm uh, the first developer working in the studio to commit changes for my story. So uh, let's see how somebody else in another sandbox might be working on the same application, but they are isolated and they can use their own feature branches. So I'm going to come back to my uh, sandbox management home screen. Um, and then I'm going to pick uh, a different sandbox to work in. So let's say now Carol is also working um, on the same application as Jeevan. So what she's going to do is she's going to copy over the URL for her sandbox and then log into it. So here is Carol and uh, she is going to try to log into her sandbox in the same way that uh, anybody else really would. Okay, so Carolyn is in her sandbox and let's say she is also working on a story in which she has to modify the same app as Jeevan was modifying before. So she's also gonna open studio here. 
So now Carol is going to select the same application because she has to make a change as part of her story to the same app. Um, now let's look at this business tool. If we, if you recall from a few minutes ago that G1 was trying to make an edit to this business tool in her sandbox. So when we come and look at this business tool that um, somebody else in their own you know, sandbox is working on, we will see that uh, this does not contain the changes that you know somebody else is making in their sandbox. So those two sandboxes are like completely isolated from each other. Two developers can continue to work in parallel on their stories, even though they're touching the same metadata files and you don't have the same, uh, you know, um, uh, issues with the platform where somebody else can, you know, override the stuff that you had been working on, or somebody accidentally promotes changes that are not ready to be promoted yet. So this saves us from all of the side effects that not having developer isolation on the platform kind of poses. So um, here we're saying like um, uh, a few minutes ago, June was working on the same app, same metadata files, Carol is working on the same app, same metadata files, but they're completely isolated from each other's changes. So um, Carol has made some um, uh, comments here. So this is Carol's comments for story, let's say, six, seven, eight. Um, this was a different story than, than what June was working on. So she's going to save these changes. And now that she's ready to promote these changes, we will see that she's connected to the same repo, but she's connected with her own respective feature branch. So now, even though they're working on the same application, Jeevan and Carol don't have to share a branch. They can continue to work independently and push independently to the Git repo as and when they are ready. So here, um, Carol is also going to commit her changes, whatever she made. And then these are So now we've seen that uh, how two developers can be uh, hosted in their own sandboxes and work independently. And when they're ready to have their changes um, promoted, they're going to commit their changes to Git. And uh, we'll see how that translates over to Git and how you would merge these changes back together. So now I'm in my Git provider, I'm going to try to uh, merge the changes that both uh, the developers have pushed in as part of their respective story development. So I'm going to first merge the changes that we completed first, create a merge request out of it. So here, because, uh, you know, June was the first person to make that change to the application, she has no conflicts and she can directly go ahead and merge our changes back to the application. When it comes to the changes pushed by the other developer, which was after the first developer, uh, we're going to try to create another merge request to show how that goes. So here we see that now that Carol is trying to commit her changes, because Carol and Jeevan had worked on the same uh, application file and it modified the same file, uh, whoever is the last person as per Git rules, they're going to have to resolve those conflicts in Git, um, which is which is ideally how you are supposed to do your Git development instead of you know people overriding each other's changes accidentally. You follow Git standard merge, merging protocols to merge the changes of multiple developers together. Um, so. Um, I have reviewed these changes and I think the changes that I've made encompass the changes that were there before. So I'm going to pick one. So now that I've resolved all the conflicts, I'm going to go ahead and uh, merge my changes back into the main branch. So now that we have seen that uh, how we can use sandboxes to do true Git based development on the platform, I wanted to take like a minute to call out some of the limitations that still remain with uh, doing source control based development on the platform and how some of the new uh, product tooling that we are working with can help alleviate that, those challenges. So one of the limitations that still remains in trying to use source control with, the, with ServiceNow is having to maintain code as XML files when you're trying to use source control and when you're trying to use Git. And we know that uh, doing development and you know doing any of those kind of like 
merge conflict resolutions and any kind of code maintenance is so much more challenging with the XML format. With the new pro developer tooling uh, with ServiceNow SDK and IDE introduced in the platform, now you can create and maintain your ServiceNow applications as actual source code instead of XML files. And uh, we'll link uh, to some of those related videos in the description uh, box of this video, and then be sure to check it out. And we'll be creating a, a more, more content around how you can use the pro code tooling and, uh, and uh, ServiceNow developer sandboxes to really create that uh, enhanced developer collaboration uh, capabilities in the platform. So this is really great. I'm really excited about what you have to offer in this de developer sandboxes. This is like a completely different way of developing on the platform. So one of the questions I've got is, and I think you may have mentioned this earlier, is there a limit to the number of developer sandboxes that you can have in an instance? Uh, yes, that's correct. We are limited to a maximum of 30 sandboxes per instance, and that's a limitation that's posed by some of those infrastructure requirements and not necessarily a functional limitation. So um, maybe in the future we'll see that change, but for the time being, it's 30 sandboxes per instance. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned infrastructure requirements. So how can developers get started on this? Like I imagine there's a little bit more than just a plugin on this one. Uh, yes, that's correct. Right now, if your uh, you know um, your team is interest, interested to use sandboxes, they can reach out to us. Um, although it's restricted uh, go to market right now, we can uh, get sandboxes in your hands if we deem that your team is the right fit to use them. And uh, once all the entitlements and uh, you know purchases are done, we can help set up an instance with sandboxes for you. Excellent. That's great to hear. So, with that in the sandboxes. You showed using one user per sandbox. Now, let's say to kind of work around some of the, you know, the limited number, let's say you have a front end and back end developer and they wanted to work in the same sandbox working on the same feature, but two sides of it, would they be able to do that? They're technically not stopped from using that. Uh, there would be two things to kind of keep in mind there. One is if you have developers sharing the same sandbox, then you use any isolation benefits from it. And then, um, depending on the kind of activities you're doing, hosting like too many people in one sandbox might lead to a little bit of performance issues. As well. Okay. Well, that certainly gives some different options for making the most out of those sandboxes. I mean, this is really exciting stuff. Uh, like I, I've been dying for this kind of isolation. Um, does it work across all of the application metadata? Like, is this going to work for service portal? It's going to work for everything. Everything you can do on an instance, you can do on a sandbox. You have both just made my evening. <laughs> I am so excited about this feature. Uh, really well, um, <laughs> I've been a developer on the platform before, so I know firsthand how painful it is. So I am personally very excited that this capability is coming, and you know we can we can empower our customers and we can empower our developers to just be more productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited for this. Well, thank you both for joining me today and for sharing this with us. Uh, that is all the time that we have for this episode of Creator Toolbox. We have more episodes coming or already out, so be sure to check out our channel. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks.